Hi, and welcome to series two of Master Your Fishing. In series one, we gave a brief overview of the various tactics required for you to catch on commercial fisheries. In series two, we're going to be going into greater detail in some of those tactics. Join us today at Old Huff Fisheries, where we're going to be using two of the most effective methods to catch on these type of venues, the short pole and the margins. So why are these lines so effective? Well, the best way that I can explain it is that on lakes, there's places where fish will naturally congregate when they're not feeding and places where they'll naturally go and look for food. Now, we're on Big Macs at Old Huff here, where we've got an island at 40 metres. That to me is a place where the fish are going to back off to during the course of the day and that's where they're going to sort of feel more comfortable being further away from an angler. At some point during the day when those fish get hungry, they come looking for food. So once they arrive during close proximity of an angler, those fish are actively looking for food. So what that does, it puts, it puts the fish on your terms. You can feed them how you want and catch them in a very quick manner because they're hungry, your rig's perfectly presented and you can feed the bait exactly how you want. So you can keep them nailed on the deck, you can bring them up in the water, you can dictate to the fish far more than you can on any other line. And that for me is why these lines are so effective. Coupled with the fact that you're looking for a hard, clean bottom, which is out of the silt, that also allows you to get cleaner, faster bites. And that is why these lines are such match winners. It lends itself to summer months, warmer months, when the, when the fish are actively looking for food, between sort of April, maybe up to October. But even during the winter, if, if you're on an F1 venue, sometimes the best line in the middle of winter can be your short five metre line. So it's one of those, for me, it's when the fish are actively looking for food. That's when these lines come into play. So let's start by looking at the short line, or what's commonly referred to as the five metre line, which can be a little bit misleading. Um, but I'll show you what we look for. Okay, we'll come back to rigs in a sec. What I'll do first is actually plumb up. So what we're looking for, we're looking for the base of the shelf where it starts to level off before it hits the silt. Now, we don't want to be in the silt because that's, that can mask the hook bait and make it harder to get a bite. We're looking for a clean bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with a plummet and drop the rig in on a top kit length, just so I can get a feel for the depth of the water and what it's doing. So as you can see, there's plenty of float sticking out there. I can already see that it's sloping away. So I'm just gonna add sections until it stops sloping, basically. And you can see there, that plummet hits the bottom nice and firm and hard which shows that we're out of the silt and still on the original clay bottom. So that's starting to get there now. So we got to this stage here, and you can see I've pushed forward about a metre and it's pretty much levelled off. Still going slightly, but I can already feel that the deck's going to get a little bit softer there. So we're going to come back to this point here. You can see a float showing, still shelving, and there. That bottom still feels nice and hard. It's just before that layer of silt that we've built up over the years on the lake bottom. So that's what's referred to as the five metre line. And like I said, it can be a bit misleading because sometimes that area can be at four metres, it can be at six metres, it can be at seven metres. What you're looking for is the base of that shelf just out of the silt. It's the first clean area of lake bed 
the fish come to when they're coming looking for food towards the angler. And that's where I'm going to start. Now, a common misconception that lots and lots of anglers make about this short line, and it, I want to concentrate on this point on this video, is that fish will not be feeding there all day. However, most anglers will feed that line from start to finish, and that can cause some problems. Mainly being that if a line's fed for three hours before a fish eats any bait, you've got three hours worth of bait on the bottom, which is gonna make it very hard for any fish to find your hook bait in amongst all of those three offerings. And that, in my opinion, is why lots of anglers struggle on this short line. So what I like to do, and bearing in mind this can only be done with venue knowledge, um, reacting to what the fish are doing on the day, is feed that line just before the fish actually are ready to start feeding. And like I said, this can come down to venue knowledge. You know that during the course of a match, you're most likely to start catching at two o'clock, for example. Another thing that you can see is on a lot of lakes, you can see carp cruising around. And now when they're ready to start feeding, their behavior will change. You'll see those cruisers starting to come into the edge or come towards you, or you can't see the fish anymore. And that's, that's another clue that the fish could be ready to start feeding. So I'm gonna show you how I'd start this session. Um, based upon the fact that I've not fed this line at all. I just want to go in and start fishing at the time that I think I'm going to have the best opportunity of catching those fish. Let's have a look at the rig first before I drop in. So I'm going to start at the top end. Now, I'm going to fish pellets today. So I'm going to introduce them both by catapult or feeding them out of the hand and a small pot. So we've got a grip flex pot right on the end of the pole tip there with a hole in the top just to drop some pellets in. We've got our new reactor core elastic. Uh, that's a, it's a 12 to 16 rating. That's absolutely perfect for the size fish that we're expecting to see here on Big Max, which are two to three pound F1s and carp up to around about 12 pound. Main line, 018, low vis. I use 018 for every one of my rigs. I believe the robustness and the stiffness of the line is everything you want from a main line. I don't think you need subtlety in your main line. In fact, the benefits of fishing a stiffer, heavier line far outweigh trying to fish lighter. So I'll always fish 018, even in the depths of winter. I've got a big number six back shot just above the float. As you'll see when I lay the rig in, I want to try and hold this rig in position for as long as I can without moving it. It's not a line that I'm going to be lifting and dropping. I just want to replicate my loose feed and get it straight on the bottom and sit there and wait for a proper bite. We've got one of our new midi wrap floats. That's in a diamond shape in about a 0.3. It's, I'm, on, I'm on a lake today with very little wind so I can fish a fairly light float and hold it in position effectively. Super strong, super stable. We've got the uh, the braid wrapped round the top of the float, which doesn't affect the way the float sits in the water, but holds the eye in place. That's perfect for this style of fishing. Then we've got a simple spread bulk of number eight, number eight shot, and that's down to an 014 hook length and a 16 km. KM3. Now you notice I've hooked the band on this one. The reason I've hooked the band is because I, not knowing this venue, I don't know whether I'll get more bites on expanders or hard pellets. So just by hooking the band, it gives me the option to swap between the two. And that is an 014 hook length. Again, not super strong, but more than strong enough to land these big carp in open water. So that's the rig. Let's show you what I've, what, how I start the session. I'm going to start by feeding around 12 pellets, 10, 12 pellets, something like that. Get them into the pot. Now, an important thing to do is just to dunk them into the water, drain the water out, and that will just ensure that every one of those pellets will sink straight away. They won't hold in the surface tension when you feed and potentially drift off out of line. And then I'm replicating what I'm feeding. I put in a six mil hard pellet on the hook. 
So I'm fishing and feeding exactly the same bait. There's nothing different out there which the fish can feed on, which I can't catch them on. I've got a far bank marker, which I'm going to line up very accurately with. I've marked the pole with tipex, so I know exactly the distance. And all I'm going to do is very accurately drop those pellets in and create an almost mini method feeder effect. So I've got those pellets in a very tight group. I'm going to swing the rig away from me because you don't want the rig swinging towards you because you'll have a massive loop in your line and you potentially won't see any bites. So I'm just going to hold that float while it swings back towards me. Drop that down in position. And then I'm going to use that back shot just to hold that rig in position until I get a bite basically. I wasn't happy with how the float was sitting there. It was sitting too high in the water. I know it will sit slightly lower once the weight of the pellet is in direct contact with the float bristle. So I'm just going to lay that rig in again, just so I know the second that pellet gets touched by a fish, I'm going to see an indication. Now, as I mentioned, I fed a small little tiny trap of pellets with the cup. Now, we're on a big venue here, which possibly isn't enough to attract fish. If there was some fish feeding fish in the area, a small cup like that would be more than enough to get an indication or a bite. But today, the fish aren't really on the feed. It's a little bit harder than I expected. So what we're gonna have to do is attract some fish into the peg, let them know where we're fishing. And you can only do that with noise. So all I'm gonna do is throw two maybe three pellets over the top of that line every few minutes just to create a little bit of noise to let some feeding fish know where the bait is basically and it might not look like a lot of bait but that's more than enough noise to attract some fish carp and f1s on these venues are extremely tuned in to the noise of these pellets hitting the surface of the water so just that little plop is more than enough to attract a few fish into the area I don't want to be putting loads in, I don't want to be putting 10, 12, 15 pellets in. Just two or three, maybe four, two at a time. Something just to make a bit of noise to attract those fish to that area. And like I said, I'll repeat that every few minutes until I get a bite. If I was to put 15, 20 in at a time, by the time 10, 15 minutes has passed, all of a sudden I've got 50, 60 pellets on the floor, on the deck, sorry. Um, which gives me less chance of my one pellet being taken by a fish. So it's all about just managing your peg, not putting too much bait in and waiting for that bite. Like I said, you're fishing exactly the same bait on the hook to what you're feeding while when fishing hard pellets. So if there are feeding fish in your peg, you will get a bite. So all we're going to do now is wait for a bite every couple of minutes, introduce a, a few free offerings, and then once we hook a fish, we'll go back out with our little trap. So there we go. Straight into a fish. Didn't take very long at all. If I'd have been fishing, or well, feeding this line for ages and ages and ages all day, three hours, I can guarantee, unless you're on a red letter day, hardly any of that bait would have been fed upon until the fish are ready to feed and we probably would have missed out on this fish. The other thing that happens and lots of anglers complain of is foul hooking fish once they start feeding on their short line and this is simply because they've got lots and lots of bait there and the fish have got too much choice and that means they're swimming into the line and that's why people miss bites basically. There are times when like I said Feeding heavily from the off will outscore a more measured approach. But on the whole, I think over the course of a season, this will far outweigh any other approach. A nice measured approach, not too much bait, cleanly catching one fish at a time and then starting again. So again, we're going to put 10, 12 pellets in. 
Didn't take that long to get a bite last time. Now, what I'm going to do now is assume that the majority of those pellets that I fed initially have been eaten during the course of me getting that bite and literally start again with my little trap. So accurately out to the point of the island, on the mark on my pole, dropping the pellets in a little tiny area, flick the rig out past and the hold tight as that rig swings towards me. So that rig's sitting a little bit lower this time, so I'm just going to lift it up ever so slightly, drop it back down, and now that's ready to sit there and wait for a bite. So again, we're just going to make a little bit of noise and just repeat exactly the same process until we get another fish. A lot of people get confused of whether they're laying on, coming off the bottom while trying to catch these fish. For me, the answer is no. When fishing in this style, I'm always going to stay just, just touching. The best, you're best to plumb up with about an inch over depth and then pull the rig tight to the hook bait. That way, you always know that the second that hook bait gets touched, you get a bite. Now, there are times when you get that many fish there that you're getting loads of liners. There's two things that you can do in this situation. You can either plumb up into shallower water and come closer to you, or you can physically start fishing shallow, which involves a completely different rig, shot in, complete, in a completely different way. It's not something that we're gonna have a problem with here today. I think we're just gonna feed our little trap, attract a few fish, and get a bite once every five, maybe 10 minutes and put a good weight into the net because these are big fish but like i said if you are having trouble with line bites the only two things that you can do are physically fish shallow and that's anything from two foot to four foot off the bottom in a swim like this or come closer to you or even go down into the margins because it's a pure sign that the fish just want to be in shallower water but the way this is working at the minute, this is working perfectly for this method. That we sit here, feed a little trap, catch a fish and repeat. I had a bite for a minute or so, so I'm just going to chuck in, it's over the top, two pellets, two pellets. I know it doesn't look like a lot of bait, the fish are very switched on to that bait, that sound of pellets or bait hitting the surface of the water, so you'll be surprised at what sort of response such a small amount of bait can actually bring to the peg. A fish somewhere in the swim will know that that's just gone in. It just depends on whether that fish is prepared to go and find that bait and feed, basically.
Well, a lovely big F1 taking on the short pole and pellet tactics. So that's caught some fish. Let's take a look at the margins and let's see if that can be just as effective. We've caught some fish from the five metre line. But I've had a few funny indications, which tells me that the fish want to be in slightly shallower water. So it could be time to, ch to try the margins. Now I'm going to treat the margins exactly the same as my five metre line. I don't want to start introducing bait onto it until I'm fairly sure I'm going to get a bite. Again, you're looking for clues, fish behaviour, carp starting to cruise into the edge, liners on your five metre line, or just knowledge of the venue. Because some venues you can catch down the edge from like the start of the session right through to the end. Others, you're waiting for either a little bit at the start or a little bit at the end. Some is the last sort of couple of hours of a normal daytime session. It's all about general knowledge of the venue or picking up on the clues of what's happening around you. Even other anglers can be a good indicator. So, I'm not going to put any bait in. So what am I going to put in? For me, over the years, and I've, I've, I've touched this on series one, ground bait has caught lots of fish. It's a great attractor, but I don't think it's the best way to catch fish from down the edge. Just because of the nature of the bait with the small particles, it can spread everywhere and take the fish with it. So once you start introducing ground bait, you're, you've got to keep doing it because you'll go in with a small sort of area of, 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 of bait that's like made of ground bait, small tiny particles, a fish will come in and disperse that all over the place. And to replicate that again, you've got to put another ball of ground bait in to try and get some fish to focus on the main group of feed. And before you know it, you've put in kilos and kilos and kilos. You've got loads of fish in your peg and you can't get a bite. So I'm going to go in with a little tiny pot of micro pellets. And that's all I'm going to feed to kickstart my line. And I generally do that about 10 to 15 minutes before I want to have a look. So it's literally that, which is almost identical to what you put in on a method feeder. And it's exact, that's exactly the kind of presentation that I'm looking to sort of replicate down the edge. I'm just going to put this in now. I've already plumbed up to a depth of two foot, which is right in tight against a very steep slope. That's also important to get against that steep slope, get against it, sorry, so that no fish can get in behind your rig. You get loads of problems with line bites with big fish down the edge in such a small area where they can get past your rig into a sensible depth of water. You want to be tight in against the bank so your rig is the last thing they get into and that's the best way to get proper bites. Let me just feed this down the edge and I'll go through my rig. I'm going to follow exactly the same principles as my five metre line. I've plumbed up very accurately. I know what I'm lining in with. I know how far I'm going because I've marked the pole. And you're going to cut that bait extremely accurately and carefully. So we know that that's smack bang on where we're going to be presenting our rig. That's very important to get the quickest bites down the edge when fishing in this manner. Okay, so let's have a look at the rig. Again, starting at the top end, as I've already touched upon, I've got our largest grip flex pot, and that's going to get filled with micros every time I drop in and look for a fish. And all that's going to do is create a nice pile of bait on the bottom, which will spread out a little bit, and then I'm going to drop a four mil expander over the top. The only time that might change is if I get too many bites off silverfish and I need a, a, a tougher hook bait and then I'll put some corn over the top. It's worth pointing out at this point that fishing with micro pellets in this manner, two foot is really, or two and a half foot is really the maximum that you can do this in. I'm right on the maximum on this peg today of where I'd fish in this manner. Any deeper than that, and you're starting to look at either hard pellets, hemp, um, with big sort of worm hook baits because it's simply too deep to fish in this manner. You need to have two foot or less, up to about 12 inches, and then anything shallower than 10, 10, 12 inches is just too shallow to consistently catch. So we've got our yellow reactor core. Again, we're fishing for big F1s and carp up to 12 pound. This elastic so versatile and can cope with all of those size fish. We've got 018 again, 
Again, I've, I've touched upon before, I'm a fan of big in, f fishing heavy lines. We've got one of our new midi wrap margin floats. This is a perfect design that will take between four, four and five number eights, which is quite a heavy float for the depth of water, but that's exactly what you want. Again, super strong, perfect shape for this, slightly body down with a two mil bristle, so you're not getting striking at too many line bites and a glass stem just to hold everything still. And then it couldn't be simpler down the business end. We've got one bulk of number eight slot shot, 014 hook length and a 16 km4. So that rig is all about just holding your hook bait still over your little pile of micro pellets until you get a nice positive bite, which shouldn't take too long. So it's simple as that really. You're, uh, you, the idea of the method is not feed too much bait, go in over your little pile of bait, hold it tight until you get a bite, catch a fish. The disturbance of hooking the fish will disturb all your bait so there's nothing on the bottom and you'll drop back in again over, over a, another little pile and repeat the process. You're fishing for one fish at a time instead of trying to get every fish in the lake in your peg with kilos and kilos of bait. So let's give it a go. So all we do is you keep the rig out the way, you line up with your far bank marker, hold your pole on the mark, very accurately pop that bait in, lift your rig out, drop it straight in over the top of those pellets, pull the pole to the side, into the bank so your rig's pulled against that slope, and then sit and wait, just like we were on the five metre line, and wait for your bite. I'm hoping it shouldn't take too long. That looks like there's a roach down there at the minute. Roach can be a bit of a pain with this sometimes. Again, if roach are a big problem on your venue, then micro pellets and fishing in this manner isn't going to be as effective as fishing with large hook baits such as corn or worm. So it's all about tailoring it to your, uh, to your, to, to your venue. But this will work on the majority of commercial venues. If you are fishing with other baits down the edge, again, the same principles still apply with the feeding, that you're better off waiting until the right time of the day before you start catching. You could sit down here for five minutes and hook the biggest fish of the day, or you could sit down here for four hours and not get a bite. It's five minutes at the right time is worth hours in the wrong. I think that was a big liner then. The only bite worth striking at is a short, fast stab of the float. Anything else is either a small fish or a line bite and will either result in a foul-looked fish, there we go, or a roach. It's like one of the smallest fish of the day, this. There you go, small left one, good start. It just demonstrates how effective that can be. We've been in a minute, minute and a half, and we're into a decent fish. No dramas, no foul looked fish. And now we're going to drop in and start again. By fishing in this manner, in my opinion, you can quite often build a much bigger weight than what you ever would trying to pile lots of bait in. You just, although it might initially seem you've got less fish in your peg because you can't see tails and, and swirls everywhere, you'll end up catching more because you actually catch most of the fish that actually come in the peg. Whereas with traditional margin fishing, with ground baits, etc., you generally don't catch half the fish that come in. They get away with feeding on your bait just because of the sheer amount of spread and the sheer amount of bait that's another option to your hook bait. So again, repeat the process nice and accurately, drop over that little pile, float against the bank, or pulled into the slope, shall I say, and you sit and wait for a bite. Nice big stable rig, everything's over the top of that pile of micro pellets. And as soon as a carp comes into your peg, it's gonna pick out that bait and get hooked.
This elastic's perfectly matched to this size fish. It's soft enough to not bump F1s, but more than strong enough to, cape, to, to cope with fish up to 15, even sort of 20 pound. Coupled with a puller kit, it just keeps you in perfect control all the time. A big F1. So the thing I like about this reactor core elastic, it's, uh, it's, got, a, it's got another layer inside of it, which is different to our uh, shock core elastic that's got a high carbon content. And not only have I found that it makes it last longer, it also seems to make the elastic a bit more progressive. And by that I mean a bit more pingy. So the shock core will, will bottom out faster or, or bottom out without putting a huge amount of pressure. Whereas this will keep, as you, as you pull it, they'll gradually apply more and more pressure. And all that basically means is not only have you got elastic that lasts longer, it means you've got an elastic which covers more sizes or grades of elastic. So I've been able to cut down on how many different top kits I carry to the bank since switching over to this reactor core. Get it checked out. It's a, it's a great new product. The great thing about it as well is it's brilliant value for money. So at five metre lengths, you end up getting two standard top kits out of it rather than one which you normally pay for with hollow elastics. What a cracking fish to end a cracking day. Get out there on the bank, follow my advice and get yourself catching fish like this. <laughs>